Star Wars Battlefront 2 is the biggest pile of fuck I have ever played. I'm also not going to win any fucking Nobel Prizes for calling this now. In January, every game reviewer who hasn't been paid off by EA, blackmailed by Disney, or had a cunting lobotomy will rate this game as number one in their top 10 list of worst games of the year, 2017. So let's get stuck in, and whilst being careful to be balanced, fair and impartial, let's review the predatory pay-to-win borderline fraudulent mobile app missold psychologically manipulative time-gated child abusing scam mongering paywalled chalice of rapist piss that is Star Wars Battlefront 2 <laughs> In a strange and ironic way though, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is almost certainly the most important game of the year, and perhaps it's the best single thing to happen to video gaming in a fucking decade. Is it a good game? Fuck no. It is, in every traditional and contemporary sense, horrible. But luckily for us, it is so horrible and morally bankrupt that it may end up changing the video game industry for the better. In the same way that Pearl Harbor represented a brilliant and ambitious military action, Battlefront 2 was an incredible initial coup for EA at the point of conception. But just like the Japanese Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, EA was so focused on winning the battle, they didn't fully consider that they might be starting a fucking war that would ultimately lead to Nagasaki and Hiroshima getting fucking nuked into the ground a few years later. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is EA's Pearl Harbor, and they are already getting fucking nuked. For those of you unfamiliar with the Star Wars universe, it's basically a story about... incest. It all starts when a bird with metal tits cops off with her crybaby kid brother, and they set off to fuck up their old man, Darth Vadon because teenage kids always treat their parents like shit, I guess. They decide to form a rebel alliance, which is basically like the Taliban, only with more snowflakes and whining. They hire a thief and Paddington Bear and a magician who spends most of the time lecturing people on how to use a fucking lightsaber, then when he finally gets into a serious fight, just stands there like a cunt. Along the way, they pick up their servile and obedient manservant, Jar Jim Crow. <laughs> and swing by the pet shop to buy a lizard. The kids have a bit of brother on sister snogging action and some heavy flirting, then head off to their dad's place of work to try and fuck him up. On their travels, they meet a guy with superpowers who has wet dreams about his mum. No shame there. I have wet dreams about his mum too. Then Brass Knockers marries some big bloke because he's fucking loaded, but decides she's better off out of there, and they head off to cause more mayhem. Their old man helps run the empire. The trains run on time, they have cool uniforms, low crime rates, and apart from a little bit of killing, they frankly do a very pleasant job of running the galaxy. They're a pretty organised bunch, and I don't see what all the complaining was about, frankly. The creepy Lannister twins blow up a Death Star because, just like all posh kids, they bleat on all fucking day about principles and justice, but don't actually give a shit about the average guy on the street. Seriously, the Empire blow up a little barely populated planet, and that's considered evil. The Rebels blow up an artificial moon, jam fucking packed with people, and that's just fucking peachy, apparently. Oh yeah, that's different, because the good guys did that, so it must be fine. In the finale, they recruit a race of teddy bears to help them, called Ewanks, whose special power is ruining the last film in a trilogy. They destroy the perfectly functioning empire, kill the coolest guy in the universe, and then organise a folk festival. I get it, some people don't like the empire, but fucking hell, the streets were clean, you got paid on time, and they had the coolest spaceships. Okay, the management could occasionally be a bit... grumpy. 
but they paid well and everyone was happy until those pesky kids came along, snogged each other, fucked everything, committed genocide and then set up a new dictatorship run by, you guessed it, themselves. Personally, I always preferred the Empire. Who would you rather have by your side when the shit hit the fan? Him or them? If you don't believe my account of Star Wars, then uh, just watch Hidden Fortress by Akira Kurosawa, because it's the same film. No, it's literally the same fucking film. They ripped it off. In fact, if Hidden Fortress was an hour shorter, was dubbed into English, had a bird with metal tits and some teddy bears in it, we would all probably be cosplaying as samurai these days and going to Hidden Fortress conventions instead. So what is Star Wars Battlefront 2? It's basically a half-baked, trimmed-down version of a Battlefield game with laser guns and spaceships. And I'm talking Battlefield Hardline, not Classic Battlefield. It has a crappy four-hour single-player campaign where the NPCs have the AI sophistication of toasters. It's like a member of Delta Force fighting his way out of a methadone clinic. At times, you almost feel sorry for the enemy. There are a selection of multiplayer modes with a selection of maps. Whilst the terrain and map design is actually okay, too many modes corral and police you into certain positions. And if you don't move, you get fucking executed. It's like going into war with your fucking mum. Don't go there. Stand there. Get over there. Fuck you. It's war. I want to go where I fucking like. I want to stay here and counter ambush. I don't want to be fucking micromanaged by the fucking game engine for fuck's sake. Progress is mostly done via loot boxes. Yes, it's random loot box based progression. Your progress is time gated like a pay to wait mobile game. The game encourages you to buy loot crates in game and it is without fucking a doubt pay to win. I mainly found myself playing this game out of a sense of morbid curiosity. I just had to keep seeing what was around the next corner not because I was excited about what I would find, but because I just knew I would find something else shocking. Like searching a serial killer's basement for corpses. The main selling point of this game is the IP. Basically, you get to play dress up Barbie in Star Wars clothes. Beyond that, it's essentially the thin shell of a shooter game wrapped around a giant fucking core of monetization. I found that it was as laggy as fuck in all modes with long loading screens, even long loading screens leaving matches for fuck's sake. It crashes frequently and if you have one single cunting out of date driver anywhere on your PC, you will get bumped out of every multiplayer match until such time as you Google the problem and fix it. So what is the full horror of this game's business model? In Battlefront 2, Electronic Arts, using Disney's rights to Star Wars, has designed and created the greatest example of hyper monetization in any video game title in the history of video games. They managed to converge every aspect of mobile apps, games as a service, loot crates, pedo gambling and time gated progress, wrap it all up in Star Wars costumes and in one of the greatest acts of video games, Hubris, not only expected people to play it, they expected people to pay 70 bucks for the fucking privilege and fucking like the fact they're doing it. The Reddit analysis showed it would take 4,500 hours of play to unlock everything. And someone else has run the stats and demonstrated that it's much more efficient to get a part-time job and just use your income to buy everything in loot crates. Unlocking a single hero character like Darth Vader takes about 40 hours of play, on the condition you don't spend a fucking penny on any other aspect of progress. Even by the most generous definition, this game is pay to win. Some would say any game that lets you buy loot is pay to win, but personally I use the definition more associated with freemium or free to play games. Basically, 
It's not pay to win if you can only buy advantages that normal players could reasonably grind themselves. In this game, you buy loot instantly that it takes other players years to grind. It's pay to fucking win. And when I say years, I mean fucking years. Two and a half years to be precise. Working a standard 40 hour working week with four weeks holiday per year playing this game as a full time job, it will take you over two and a half years to unlock everything. Or you could just spend a couple of thousand dollars. To add insult to fucking injury, the matchmaking is tuned to constantly pitch new low geared players against higher level, much more powerful players. So you constantly get your ass kicked by people many times more powerful than you. These are not trivial gear upgrades I'm talking about, like scopes or skins. Loot upgrades turn you from a peon into a god of war. Newbies don't stand a fucking chance against veteran geared players. The entire game is designed around and encourages you to buy microtransactions and loot crates. This is not just a game with microtransactions. This is a fucking microtransaction storefront with a substandard game wrapped around it. The reward system appears to reward time played, not score, winning, fucking anything. So in fact the game does not really reward you at all, it's time gated. The game seems deliberately designed to frustrate you into buying loot crates to progress and nothing you do in game will accelerate your progress other than time served in matches. It's worth noting that as evil as the random gambling loot crate system appears, it's actually worse than you imagine. The loot rewards are not purely random and in the fine tradition of heuristic analysis and econometrically based algorithms, the rewards that each player receives are finely manipulated to encourage you to spend real money to progress. I keep seeing report after fucking report of people being primarily rewarded in loot crates for precisely the classes and ships they play the least. Shocking coincidence that. Surely they would not stoop so low as to deploy heuristic fucking algorithms to manipulate players into not getting the shit they need to play, thus forcing them into overspending on loot crates. Seriously, supporting this game is like sponsoring your own personal rapist or mugger. It's like renting the truck for the burglar who is about to rob you fucking blind. But it's worth taking a quick moment to look at exactly what people mean by games as a service. I'll cut the shit and get straight to the core of it. You see video games went from being a fringe activity played by nerds to the biggest fucking sector in the entertainment industry in just a few decades. Now video games are the big shits in town, along came all the fucking vultures, bloodsuckers, parasites and cunt lords that go with big business. Video game publishers, business consultants and business analysts basically sat down and did some maths looking at other areas of the entertainment industry. They approximated that people watching paid TV pay about 50 cents an hour over the course of a month. They approximated that people watching a rented movie pay about a dollar an hour for that. People at the cinema pay about three to five bucks per hour for that shit. Then they looked at video games and thought, shit. We need to come up with a plan to force gamers to pay as much for their fun as every other motherfucker is paying. This concept is obviously giving scant fucking regard to the fact that many of us play so much of video games because they don't cost us a dollar an hour to fucking play. Because you can buy a game and enjoy it at your leisure. Because if you're a student or just plain broke, you can stay in, save money and chill on fucking Xbox. Well, the bloodsuckers and the publishers put their heads together and hatched a plan. They decided that video games should cost us a certain amount of money to play per hour. And they started reverse engineering video games so that they were designed explicitly from the ground up to screw that target amount of money out of the player. That is video games as a service. 
parasites arbitrarily decided that video games are a service, a service that gets charged by the hour, and that they're going to make games force us to pay that money whether we fucking want to pay or not. Like, there was a taxi meter clamped on the side of our gaming rigs. To use a simple analogy, if you bought Fallout 3 on PlayStation, that's like buying a car. If you play a free-to-play game like World of Tanks and occasionally buy premium time, that's like renting a car. If you play Star Wars Battlefront 2, that's like buying a car, renting the car and paying the lease on the car. On the same fucking car, all at the same fucking time and only getting one very shit car. That really hits me where I live. What have you done with those plans? Peter Warman, CEO at Newzoo, explained in A-List Frontline Marketing that it's proving hard to persuade a lot of gamers to adopt the new model. And I quote, Many console players have reacted negatively to the development of these models due to their familiarity and satisfaction with the pre-existing model. That's marketing speak for People like getting the thing they pay for. People get upset paying for something, not getting it, and then having to pay more money and still not getting it. The other implication of games as a service is that it allows game publishers to offset the costs of making a game. Now they can go to market without fully funding their game, working on the assumption that future technical support development costs for the season pass DLCs people may have already paid for and finishing problematic content and fixing bugs will all be magically bankrolled by predicted future in-game purchases and microtransactions. The devastating and borderline fraudulent fucking implication of this model is that the quality of the season pass DLC content you get in future games may well be based not on what you paid but on the success of the microtransactions and loot crate sales. If they don't make enough monies in the pedo gambling, all the future content gets trimmed back. Think about that. The most sinister implication of games as a service is that frankly it means games from now on are mostly going to be launched as fucking beaters and completed whilst live. Effectively, the idea that people need to finish their fucking games before selling them will be consigned to history. Fuck that. The bad news here is that Star Wars Battlefront 2 has had its microtransactional economy fucking collapse and the future of the game was mortgaged on it. I guess the one consolation is that the DLCs were free but unless they support this game out of charity or as a public relations exercise there is no financial reason why they will not abandon it. Unless they bring back the loot boxes to fund it of course. Get your refunds fast and get the fuck out of there. So what about the internet shitstorm and the international backlash? The main virtue of this game is that the unrestricted expression of greed is so out of fucking control that it has galvanised the entire gaming community in a way nobody predicted. They say that a diverse group is most likely to unify in the face of shared threat. Well, EA were such evil greedy fuckshits they managed to unify gamers more effectively than we could have ever organised ourselves. Well, no two ways about it. It's turned into a fucking shitstorm. It's even being discussed in the mainstream press and Wall Street publications. I'll do my best to condense the backlash, but this is roughly what happened. The first alarm bells sounded in the beta testing with people crying foul over the game being pay to win. EA claimed it would tone it down and fix the problem. The pre-order players started early access and saw the full fucking horror of this game. Then the shitstorm properly took off on the internet and particularly Reddit people started doing the maths on the in-game progression and realised it was a fucking scam. 4,500 hours to cap everything, 40 hours just to get a hero unlocked. The game was set up to fuck you. EA tried to do damage control in the form of some good old fashioned lying. They claimed they rebalanced the game so everything was now fixed. 
EA basically decreased the price of stuff, but also decreased the money you earned. During a flurry of public relations bullshit from both EA and DICE, the developer, EA tried to justify the horrific loot box fuckery and the literally impossible grinding times as an attempt to give the players a sense of pride and accomplishment. This became the most downvoted comment on Reddit in history. At this point, the entire internet went fucking batshit crazy. The villagers came streaming out of their huts, pitchforks raised, and looking for someone to hang. And with good fucking reason, if you ask me. EA shit its pants and withdrew loot crates, but in a sinister twist, stated that this was a temporary state of affairs with many people suspecting that it was just an attempt to keep launch sales figures high and that the fuckery would be reinstated later. Then, the rest of the world decided that EA had crossed the cunting Rubicon and they started going batshit crazy too. Belgium's Gambling Commission launched an investigation into loot crates as gambling and is calling for a European-wide ban. Danish police started tweeting warnings to parents. Dutch authorities started an investigation into loot boxes and whether they should be regulated as gambling. And total best of all, the state representative for Hawaii, Chris Lee, has basically declared a war on loot crates, describing Battlefront 2 as, and I quote, a trap, predatory, and being like an online casino targeting kids. Today he also announced that he is going to publish regular YouTube updates on his progress and the details are listed down in the description. This game is a Star Wars themed online casino designed to lure kids into spending money. It's a trap. As things stand now, EA has taken about a 10% hit on its share value, which is heavily overinflated anyway and is entirely reliant on loot crates and pedo gambling to make a profit. Its entire business is based on destroying IPs and rolling out loot boxes. Its core business is one law away from being banned, criminalized or regulated as gambling. <laughs> Disney, meanwhile, is losing its fucking shit over this. They don't want their brand connected with gambling and have apparently phoned arch-villain Andrew Howard, CEO of EA and grandfather of the loot crate, and in no uncertain terms instructed him to unfuck the situation. The situation has got so bad that large sections of the community are shitposting on Disney tweets and social media about gambling, and let's face it, they deserve it. Well, zippity doo -dah. Disney, a company established by a racist who financed anti-Jewish political groups, got rich making racist cartoons for kids, and is run by fucking sex offenders, wants to distance itself from electronic arts because it's worried about damaging its reputation. This statement is so fucking nonsensical, it's making my brain bleed. Oh, you said we were going to a place Walt Disney built. No, Peter, I said supported. By the way, don't go on the train ride. In no small way, this shitstorm has cometh. The only sad thing about this is that it would appear that internally EA consider this game a lost cause now and are already giving hints they're going to stop financing it and cut it loose. Strangely, however, I went to the Star Wars Battlefront 2 subreddit again recently, and it's like none of this ever happened. I've been in direct contact with them, and they went to great lengths to explain why nearly every reference to the outrage concerning this game has been removed or locked in the last couple of days. I won't lie, I'm scratching my fucking head here. Their justification is that they felt that this was a drama and broke Reddit rules, and it was unfair that people were hating on EA and they wanted to get their house in order. I'm sorry, but even giving them the benefit of the doubt, it's a bit fucking odd that in the middle of perhaps the biggest video game shitstorm in history, the moderators spontaneously decide to lock or delete 
nearly all fucking posts about EA, loot boxes and gambling in video games. One does not simply lock the thread with the most downvoted comments in Reddit history. I also think it's fucking bullshit to start deleting comments because they're about the publisher EA or complaining about loot boxes or contain memes or complaining that it's gambling or criticising microtransactions in the damn game. Even if I believe all of the justifications, which I don't, nevertheless, this subreddit has fucking done all of EA's public relations work for them. They have whitewashed nearly all of the criticisms of loot boxes, pay to win, gambling and microtransactions off the subreddit. This subreddit was literally the eye of the shitstorm. Then 72 hours later, it's all smiles, elevator music and people talking about Obi-Wan fucking Kenobi skins. What the fuck happened? Perhaps this is all entirely innocent and well-intentioned, and perhaps I'm paranoid and too quick to put on my tin for beanie hat and start claiming that it's an alien conspiracy. But nevertheless, whatever the motivation, the Star Wars Battlefront 2 subreddit just did EA a huge fucking solid, and probably did a fair bit to suppress the outrage about this fuck ass of a game. I'm sorry guys if I'm treating you unfairly. But we can argue all day fucking long about your motivations and most likely it will turn out that I'm wrong. But the end result will remain the same. You just astroturfed your fucking subreddit. This battle is only just beginning. But if Star Wars Battlefront 2 is the future, then the future is shitty. This is going to play out in a number of ways, but basically the battle now seems to be between legal intervention and a world where AAA games are cunting phone apps. A lot of gaming media outlets claim all this shit needs to happen because video games need to cost more. Well, if we learn one thing from Gamergate, it's that 99% of the gaming media works for the fucking game publishers. See, this is capitalism. It's all about free market economics until they want free stuff. It's all about market forces until they want more money for nothing. It's all about the unseen hand until the banks want a government bailout. Games as a service, loot boxes and microtransactions are simply about game companies wanting more money for nothing, and the consumer has started to push back. Funny though, for all the increased profits of game companies, I don't see them paying their developers overtime during the crunch periods where they're all doing 40 to 50 hours of overtime a week. The laws in America and the EU suffer from two faults. They have not caught up with technology and also the gambling industry has lobbied so hard in the 90s that lots of laws got relaxed. This shit needs to fucking change. Because make no mistake, in specific territories and specific countries around the world, some of the things in this game are known as gambling and some practices in this game are illegal. Combine gambling with secretive, manipulative reward algorithms where there is zero disclosure of the reward statistics and how the results are tinkered with on the fly, well that right there is not legal everywhere on the planet, and for good fucking reason. It's also maybe time we address the army of influencers marauding subreddits and the forums. This shit needs to be criminalised. It's covert advertising. In the movies, you need to declare product placement. It's illegal for employees to pose as consumers and pretend to like the film on camera for a third party audience. Gaming is getting a free pass at the moment. But let this sink in. That random guy arguing with you on that forum or in that subreddit who has all the answers and is trying to bully you away from criticising loot boxes and microtransactions, check their fucking post history because some of them and I know this for a fucking absolute fact, are employees or agents of the publisher. They might dress it up in fancy words like community management and impression management, but it's fucking PR. 
they infiltrate the subs and exert influence. I can think of one AAA title where at one point about one third of the moderators of the subreddit had been flown out for a jolly at the company headquarters. I have had Smurf accounts of video games company employees identified to me. I have done comment checks on people and discovered they spend 14 hours a day arguing in support of microtransactions in subreddits. That's a weird hobby to do full time, don't you think? When the lawmakers are addressing predatory gambling practices in video games, they might also want to make it compulsory for any agent working on behalf of a gaming publisher to identify themselves when promoting a product. To put this in perspective, if you paid 30 teenagers to go onto an investors forum and lie about the value of certain stock products and pretend they were not employees, well people might well end up in prison. Do exactly the same thing on a video games forum and there are currently no laws covering it. Identical activity. One is a criminal offence that gives serious prison time, the other is legal. The only difference is that one affects rich people's money, so that's covered by the law. The other only affects little people's money, so that's fine. We can get fucked, I guess, until we make enough noise to get the law changed. The harsh reality of Star Wars Battlefront 2 is this. You should not buy this game, because it's a fucking mobile app business model with gambling thrown in that's going to cost you $70. This game is a Star Wars themed online casino. The second harsh reality is, it's a shit game. Don't believe me? Okay then, take a step back and look at this game. If you reskinned and rebranded this game, and released it under a different name like Space Warriors 2 and you didn't know it was Star Wars, would you buy it? Would you fuck? This game is a 4 out of 10 at best. But once it's covered in Star Wars costumes, it looks brilliant. But this is a shitty below average shooter. Don't let the shiny Star Wars branding fool you for a fucking second. Just pulling the loot crates out of the game, even if it's permanent, is not going to fix this game. The whole game was designed around loot crates, and there is no easy quick fix. It's a shit game, built from the ground up around pay to win microtransactions, financed directly from loot crates. It's fucked. Seriously, do not buy this game. I only bought it to review it, and I'm going to try and refund it. In fact, from now on, if a game is so obviously terrible, I will not buy a copy, even to review it. In a way, just the fact that I'm using footage tacitly endorses it. This game represents the absolutely most concentrated form of everything shitty, evil, fraudulent and dishonest in the mainstream video game industry. And if EA pulled this shit in several other industries, people would be heading to prison. Let that sink in. As a cautionary note though, as excellent as the shitstorm is, let's not celebrate too early. Everyone taking a stand and everyone fucking outraged by this shit needs to accept the fact that this is the start of the battle and it is far from over. Let's remember that part of the reason we're in this fucking mess is because of industry lobbying in the 90s to relax gambling laws. Right now, I'm sure that Disney, EA and all the other big pedo gambling corporations are getting their checkbooks out and promising politicians around the world all the money they want if they move against anyone fighting against loot crates. Don't be surprised if we see a few politicians do a 180 degree turn and publicly change their minds in the days ahead. These cunts won't go down without a fight. There is simply too much money involved. I've always called bullshit on people justifying loot crates, pedo gambling and microtransactions in video games by saying, you don't have to do it. This game vindicates me, because this game shows that you can avoid this shit for a while, but it's only a matter of time before games are balanced to punish you for not participating in pay to win and loot crates. You can fucking run for a while, but you cannot fucking hide from pedo caches.
It's a sad indictment of the game when the only positive thing I have to say about it is you might be able to get a refund. But seriously, get a refund. And then you can proudly say that you briefly owned the worst game of the year 2017. Good luck and happy hunting. Thank you.